I was playing saxophone, I was free like seeing some doing lots of jazz and playing okay. lots of gigs and lots of sessions and I used to put well I played I started off with the brand new heavies on their first three albums, four three, four albums, and then at the same time I was with Jamira Choir, so I was doing sax doing a lot of saxophone then at that point. Uh, which is how I started with Blur, which is where I am right now. And a year went by, and I think my wife said to me, she said, you should give Damon a ring because you haven't seen him for a while. I said, well, yeah, maybe I should. So I did, which was a good time to call him because he just started Gorillaz and he said he was looking for a keyboard player. And I said, well, well I can play keyboards. He said, yeah, of course you can. So, <laughs> so that, was, that was my first gig with playing professional keyboards was doing Gorillaz. And a last minute Glastonbury performance. And a last minute Glastonbury performance, yeah. How was that? Uh, it was great. It was great. I, I, I don't think uh, that we really had, you know, our concept of the show was different at that point. And after Glastonbury, it did change quite radically because it was, well, I'm a bit of a convoluted thing, but it was that we were, uh, we had a concept about how we would do the show. Yeah. And it would be an audio visual presentation without any introduction. So you just go, but for Glastonbury, you got to go out and go, come on Glastonbury. Yeah, of course. It's a different thing than yeah. Glastonbury, but actually it did, it did change our direction a little bit as how we would do the show Yeah. For, for the better. But still amazing, I mean the best gig I've ever done, and I think probably I'd say that for both Dan and I as well, would be Blur at Glastonbury. Um, the year before we did Gorillaz, yeah, and we think I was there. It you was were amazing. there. It was amazing. <laughs> we, we we got a, a hunch that um, both he and I might be um, the only people to have played successive main stage gigs at Glastonbury with different bands. We don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. That fact. <laughs> That's not bad, one. It's, it's not bad. Is it? yeah, yeah, very nice. Yeah, no, it, was, it was absolutely incredible. Yes. Uh, and, and with the blur gigs now, yes. I mean, obviously, you know, there's. Um, there's a lot of amazing things going on. You played the 100 Club last night. Yep. Got, you know, so many iconic bands have played there. Yep. You've got um, a small tour coming up, mm. um, followed by a big gig, which yes. is closing the Olympics. Yep. And what's everyone's thoughts about that? Uh, I'm very excited. Really excited. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's the Olympics is a national celebration. It's something to be proud of that's been successful, and there's no doubt about that. And um, you know, and also in a sense, kind of a rebirth of of the band Blur itself. And we we are Blur are still a very relevant and current band, important yeah. band in our in our musical history. Um, so it, that's very exciting. Absolutely. So I want to talk about keyboards. Yes. Obviously. Yes. Um, where did your history with Roland start? We know that you play an organ in Doctor D recently. Yeah. Um, where yes. Where did it start though? Well, I, I guess that probably would be a good, that is a starting point. I mean, I had a Roland, I had a, um, uh, a Roland D50 for a, a while, I yeah. think, uh, back in the day, but, um, and, yeah, we used, when we did Dr. D, yeah. we used the Roland C230, sure. and uh, absolutely fantastic organ keyboard, really flexible, um, very true to sort of, I guess, um, church organ, and the, the possibilities of the stops. And yeah, so I was using that with the harpsichord and Celeste sound as well as the organ sure. sounds inside it. Really good keyboard. And then, uh, you know, the one thing that I haven't had for a long time, or ever really, is a keyboard with, a, with really true, great vintage sounds in, as well as other sounds. So I, I realized that Roland had uh, their own dedicated organ keyboard, the VK, VK8. Let's do this again. <laughs> I realised that Roland had a dedicated organ called the VK8, so I wanted to have something that had a little bit more than that. And of course, the Jupiter 80 is absolutely everything I've ever wanted. It's got fantastic range of vintage organ sounds and um, Wurlitzer and Rhodes and piano sounds. It's it sounds beautiful and it just fits like a glove for Blur, and it will do for. For us, when we do, if we do Good, the Bad, and the Queen again, or for um, I think any any number of projects coming forward, it's going to have some real. Um, it's going to be around for a while in our lives. That's I think good that to hear. So, 
what features are you using at the moment? Obviously, you're using a lot of organ sounds. And yes. The fact that you, you were saying about the fact that you can go in and edit them. As well, well, I've, I mean, it's, it's, I was really delighted how intuitive it was because I'm not a Luddite, but I am quite limited, you know, to the, my experience of it. So really, you just want, you've got to have a train of thought about what you want it to do. And this keyboard does exactly that. You have a train of thought, I want to do this. You press a button, you find this page, and it's beautifully put together. Uh, so basically, yes, I, I, I set up kind of default organ sounds for various songs that use organ, and uh, and I set up a piano sound, you know, a couple of different piano sounds, a Celeste sound. I set up a a, a a string sound. You know, there's so many string sounds to choose from. So I've managed to blend the various voices to make my registrations, and I've made my registrations, renamed them by the name of the song. I'm able to set the levels between the different parts within the registration, which is perfect for front of house because Matt front of house has to say, can we have a little less, you've got a mix of sounds, I've got one that's got a, a, a clavinet sound, one that's got an organ sound, one with the, with the roads on top, and you know, I'm, I'm really, feel really secure with it, because um, yeah. it has vintage sound, I mean the synth sound, I haven't even, I've only scratched the surface of it yeah. in two weeks, I've had it for two weeks, Yeah. but it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be our, you know, our baby for for a, a, some time. Lastly, we yes. want to just ask you what your favourite Blair song is to play. Like, which one each night do you go? Oh, I'm gonna look at the crowd now. Uh, oh, oh, uh, well, I think probably when we do Beetle Bun. Yeah. Because uh, I've got a very juicy mix on stage with a nice stereo image. And I've got this beautiful organ sound coming out this road on Jupiter 80 with, with, my, with my adjusted Leslie. I can slow the rotor down and it's just, it's great. It's fat all across the keyboard. So yeah, I think probably beat with one. Nice. Well, have a fantastic tour and Thanks, good luck on the Olympics, Keith. Thank you very much. No worries. Pleasure.